to review this material afterwards. And for those who are not, um, please uh, consider being a client, and uh, we'll give you access to all of our webinar material moving forward. So um, this is actually uh, my second time delivering this content. It's uh, a presentation that's been created uh, using a variety of sources, and uh, I delivered it last week uh, through my partnership with VCDA, and also um, this is in conjunction with Constant Contact as well. So I'm Brandon Clayman. I'm the founder and CEO of Conscious Commerce, and I've been running my company now for 11 years. You can tell with my voice I'm a little bit stuffy. I'm just getting over a cold, um, but uh, I got rid of it pretty quick, so I'm happy about that. Um, so a little bit more about myself and where my focus is. We do focus as a small business to provide engagement marketing solutions. We are partners with um, Constant Contact. We're their number one rated partner in the world. We won an award last year for the best integrated marketing campaign, and that was really exciting. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, really what my passion is and our purpose within business is to really stay focused on getting results for customers. I know you might hear a lot of that. But uh, with us, we get a result quickly and cost-effectively because we understand what small business is. We also work with nonprofits and sometimes larger organizations. Okay. So today we're going to cover these areas of engagement. So what really is engagement marketing all about? Uh, channels, campaigns, and conversions meaningful marketing metrics that matter, and then I'll give you some examples on how you can diversify your portfolio of engagement. I'll ask you guys a few questions throughout the experience that we're having today, um, just to, you know, you can either raise your hand to engage or just to, you know, let me know where you're at with that. And there's also the questions box, so if you guys want at any time throughout this entire conversation, thanks Marsha, and by the way, welcome, and thanks for joining me. If any of you have any questions throughout, just Go ahead and ask. Um, use the questions. It's fine. There is a, a section towards the end for some Q&A, but I always like to make sure that you guys, at any point in time, if you have any anything, just, just go ahead and ask. I'll be more than happy to help you. I'm an authorized local expert with Constant Contact, and I've been doing that for 10 years. and uh, or Sorry, two years. Our partnership's been 10 years old, but uh, the, the authorized local expert program is where we go into the marketplace and deliver these types of presentations on a regular basis, as well now through webinars. And so there's about three or 400 of us that go out and do these uh, on a regular basis. All right, so let's, um, let's get into this. We've got to start off here. So what really is engagement marketing, everyone? Uh, it's, it's definitely a new and exciting way to market. And, uh, but before we like, find out what today's definition is, Let's look at how, where marketing came from. And back in the good old days, uh, we're talking back in 1898, this is really when sort of the marketing uh, or the psychology of marketing became alive. And, you know, this is really important to understand that no matter what you see happening in the marketplace today, there is a long history behind marketing itself. And as you can see here, there's, E. St. Elmo Lewis and Arthur Sheldon, and these two guys helped to create this model that you're looking at. I'm sure some of you are aware of this, the AIDA, the ADA um, model, where you've got, it starts off with awareness, and then goes into interest, desire, action, and then satisfaction, and satisfaction was added by Arthur Sheldon, and that does drive in towards today's reality around engagement marketing and making sure that you're creating that wow experience and that clients are truly happy. But it's important to, to just note, that's why I brought this slide into, into the mix here, that you know, marketing's been around for a very, very long time and that the psychology of marketing uh, um, has been something that we've all been focused on since then. So uh, really important stuff because that foundation is what has given us the opportunities today to go to the market and do what we do best. And that's obviously market advertise and promote our, our solutions, products, and services to our clients to create new experiences. And brand is everything. You know, when you look at what you're doing, regardless of the size of your company or where you're starting, the brand of your business relates to an experience that you're going to deliver. And that's an expectation that clients have. So the more you put behind the brand in terms of the features and the attributes and the essence and the messaging and the material 
all of that combines itself into an experience that you're going to create. And it's really important, as you can see, look at all these different brands out there, that you make sure that you're aware of your own brand in, in an intimate way and to really understand the type of experiences that you are here to create for your customers. That's huge and never forget that. It's like one of the biggest pieces to starting an incredible relationship with clients. So we'll talk about how marketing has changed and as you can see previously a lot of companies would focus on offline marketing, snail mail, yellow pages, newspapers, uh, television, those forms of media and mediums, um, radio, all of that back then was um, sort of all we had and obviously today it has, the landscape has completely changed and as you can tell um, this is just a sampling of, of what we can do online today with all of the new channels that have been birthed um, through social media and online reviews and coupons and all kinds of different things so really we we still do the same thing we still are marketing but we just have chosen different channels and we actually are doing it in different ways and for us I'm sure many of your small businesses if you want just raise your hand to let me know that you know if, if you're a small business raise your hand that would be good for me to be aware of um, on here thank you very much small business by the way through definition is 100 employees or less so um, and that's typically the audience that we usually work with here at constant contact and conscious commerce so as we continue to look at the evolution of of marketing we can see on this next slide that you know back then outbound marketing was was offline to open a physical door okay and then today we do the inbound marketing which is all of what you can see like blogging SEO websites um, all of that good stuff leads to opening a virtual door okay so I'm sure how many of you just raise your hand if you are involved in a sort of a brick-and-mortar retail location um, that would be useful for me to be aware of okay thanks Selena and if there's anyone else okay retail any retail environment by the way Thomas good to see you again hopefully uh, you're doing well all right okay good to know so when we look at this next slide it shows that we have so many ways now to be found online and obviously for the context and focus of the majority of what I'll be sharing with you today will be on in the online world uh, through, you know through constant contact that's our platform and how we uh, market mainly but you can see that through social and local and mobile and directories and daily deals there are so many channels and platforms uh, it's almost endless in each of these categories I mean for for example social there's a hundred social networks or more that are actively out there that you can plug into and each social channel has its own attributes and unique um, you know uniqueness and I'll, I'll share some of that with you later but it's really important to to realize that we can truly diversify our portfolio of engagement through the online world easily more uh, today more than ever before I'm just curious how many of you have ever tried to run a Groupon or similar type of offering I'm just I always ask that just who here has has run a Groupon advertisement through your own business okay Marcia did that interesting okay thank you you know with all of this what is next I mean there could very well be another channeling open channel opening up uh, you can see with virtual reality technology coming into play now wonder what's going to happen there um, I believe Instagram just made it made an announcement yesterday that they're doing relevant video visual ads now uh, on their channel which is obviously a really important piece you'll notice that with with a lot of social channels what they do is they they create a following first so they build that base um, and they get the the functionality of their platform working really well and the, the user environment and engagement working really well and then they have to in integrate some kind of revenue model 
Otherwise, they can't make this free forever. So that's, how, that's where the advertisement comes in, which gives us another opportunity to market, advertise, and promote in those channels. For example, how many of you have placed an ad inside of Twitter? How many of you have advertised inside of Twitter? Okay, just a couple of you. All right, and that's because now Twitter has to generate revenue um, because the platform's free to join, but they need to make sure that they're being a sustainable business. And, and Facebook's obviously done a good job in doing that now, and they're well on their way um, to generating uh, their income. So one of the things uh, back to engagement marketing to, to be aware of is that you know, a recent Nielsen study, and Nielsen's like a big authority on, on marketing advertising, is that 78% of people trust consumer recommendations, while 14% of people trust advertising. So that's pretty, um, you know, that's pretty impressive in terms of, you know, the overall uh, you know, reality. I mean, how many of you have been on, for example, TripAdvisor to figure out whether or not you want to go to a certain resort? Just raise your hand. Do you go to TripAdvisor? Do you read the reviews? Do you see what other people are saying to figure out whether or not this is going to be the right fit for you? And do you trust in those uh, reviews versus, let's say, the same resort was doing an advertisement to you? Um, you know, I my wife always checks, uh, not just TripAdvisor, but anything related to food, um, chow hound, because we want to hear from our peers. It's like an indirect way of getting word of mouth advertising, because uh, now that we have all of these platforms available, it makes it so much easier to get awareness around making informed decisions. And I love, like, I, I'm like a crazy computer guy. I love, love gadgets and, you know, tech toys and things. Um, because I built 5,000 computers. That's what I did in the first 10 years of my career. And then I worked for IBM Corporation as the manager of innovation and knowledge. Um, and then, uh, and of course, now Conscious Commerce 11 years later. But I'll go onto the online sites and read up all the reviews and see, like, for the next router that I'm going to buy and who's saying what. And then I go to the company and I look at their marketing materials. And really, I'm basing most of my decision off of what my peers are telling me because I know they've already had an experience with the product, and it's going to make it a lot easier for me to trust them than it would be for me to trust in the advertising. And I think that both are, are required, obviously, but uh, this is really how engagement marketing has come to life because, uh, because of these new channels and platforms, engagement marketing is now the new word of mouth. And that's really the, the core that you know, definite or underlying you know, message here behind that. I mean, it's great if you have lunch with people and you're talking, and you know, and you hear through the grapevine, "Oh, I saw this movie; it was fantastic," or "I bought this at this place." But today, because there's just so much more available and so many more people and products and things, that social, definitely social, along with email, are two powerful channels to get the word out and spread wide and far one to many. Um, so really, uh, when you look at the word of mouth and you look at what it all stems back to, it comes back to an experience. And the experience obviously relates to our human interactions. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how amazing your product is, it's are like are these clients having an incredible time with it and your company and the people in your company? So engagement marketing is around building relationships. Okay, this is a really key component to this presentation because without this human experience, business doesn't happen. And I was earlier speaking to um, one of my partners at Constant Contact, and one of the biggest things I can appreciate in my relationship with Constant Contact, since I'm one of their top partners, is the fact that we do have a human experience. And when I compare that to other types of relationships that I have out there with other companies, not mentioning any names, I look at my experience with Constant Contact and I say, wow, do I ever appreciate being able to have a phone conversation or meet them in person uh, once a year? Um, you know, it's just a phenomenal experience. And, and to me, that, that I, I don't put a dollar value on that because it, um, it's just priceless. 
and it's really, really important for, for all of us. So again, just never forget that, that connection um, and, and how important that is. And to, to go into deeper, a deeper model, this is a slide that Gail Goodman created. From, she's the CEO of Constant Contact, and I like to, to bring this into the mix here because it's, a, it's an awesome way to explain you know, what, what the engagement cycle looks like. So I've been, I've been kind of alluding to it, but here, here it is. The engagement marketing cycle, what we have here is um, you first, you're, you're, you open for business, okay? You get a client and you create a wow experience. And a wow experience is when they're so happy with what they've received, they're going to obviously share the word or they're going to do all kinds of good things. But really, the, the, the first thing you want them to do before they open up their mouth and let the whole world know is just make sure that, that they're satisfied. Back to that original ADA model I showed you in the beginning, satisfaction is where this wow experience comes into play. And our goal for all of us, I'm sure, is to create that experience for our clients. And it varies and differs depending on what people buy and engage you on. But really, that's, that's the starting point of creating a lifetime experience um, as an engage as, through, as you engage clients. I've worked with clients now for 20 years. I've had clients still from my original company, which was called Beyond Computing, and we sold computers, and we still have clients from that back in the early 90s who are, are buying services on a regular monthly basis from us today. And so obviously we've done our job to keep them happy, and it makes me proud as a, as a small business owner to, to know that we still have it in us to, to, to create li longevity in our relationships and to keep relationships fresh and enticing. And, and, and that's the next piece is <clears throat> by staying in touch with these clients. So over 20 years, we've been able to maintain a consistent communication on all fronts with the client, whether it's phoning them and um, sending them, like you can see, there's, as we move over to the next part here, you look at sort of how you engage. There's newsletters and announcements. There's events and registrations. We've been putting out events for a long time keeping our clients engaged in the cycle here because even though they may not be always actively buying from us, it's our job and our responsibility as a, provider, as a solution provider to still maintain market strength and to let our clients know some best practices. They may be enjoying, for example, constant contact and they want to get more tips and ideas on how they can best use the tool. That's what we, we do. We continue to stay in touch with our clients indirectly and directly um, and that creates the next experience of another sale. And it's really straightforward. They, they come back, they get another wow experience, we keep staying in touch with them, we continue engaging them, and of course you can, you can diversify that portfolio of engagement through other ways as well. It's not just newsletters and announcements and events and all that stuff. There are other, other platforms that you can continue to grow on or grow with them on. I I've, I've personally have developed a model where we, we actually speak to the clients on a quarterly basis and also on a monthly basis we optimize their email campaign. That's all inclusive and free as part of our engagement model. So it's really good stuff. And then of course the, 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 the consequence of creating a wow experience, and, and it's obviously a good consequence, is that you end up getting social visibility. And that social visibility it comes in the form of Anything that you're doing online, clients can participate and engage at that level and basically send their good experiences on online review sites, comments, blogs. They can interact with you on your blog, and they can send down testimonials. There's all kinds of ways that they can report. Sure, there's going to be some negative rap that happens once in a while. Um, your goal is to obviously put that fire out and resolve the issue as quickly as you can. Um, but really, the nice thing about the whole world today is that it's a lot easier for clients to let their voice be heard through all of the channels and possibilities that you're playing on and that they're on as well. And that, of course, then leads to new prospects because other people then hear about the great news and then it builds and boosts their confidence. Remember that 78% of people trust recommendations. Well, that's what happens. And then, of course, a new lead comes in and then you get to have a new client that you can now create a wow experience with. So hopefully you understood this. I, I kind of, it was a bit of a long-winded definition, but it's a really important cycle to, to look at and to understand. Um, and I, I hope it's, it's easy for you to understand that because 
that way it will be easier for you to create that wow experience, which is where everything uh, begins. Now, at its core, marketing or engagement marketing is about eliciting a physical and measurable response. And at the end of the day, guys, that's all I care about for my clients is what type of response did you get or results did you get from that active marketing campaign that you just delivered or that email that you just sent or that social media post that you put out there? What type of results did you get? And is that result bringing you closer to your goals, your objectives, and manifesting your vision for your business and creating wow experiences for customers? Yes or no? And that's all it really comes down to. It's very straightforward. We're not in marketing to, um, especially at the level that we play at in terms of our small businesses. You have to look at um, the reality is that we don't have hundreds of millions of dollars to be marketing like th some other companies do. And they can afford to not always get a response. They sometimes, the response to them is an impression. An impression is just simply the ad being shown to another human and that's it. That to them is measurable, but to us, we, that isn't. So to us, a measurable response, just and we'll get into lots of details around that, um, is, for example, a click or a download. Or they come into the store or the office, or they schedule a session with you, or they make a donation, or they call you. Anything that's related to something trackable that can drive your business forward, that ties into the sales process, that ties into lead generation, business development activities, Anything to do with that is really what's part of creating a physical, measurable response. And that's where we can stay sustainable in our marketing activities on an ongoing basis. When we look at, again, the marketing in the past, marketing in the past was really focused on finding new customers and then converting them and then keeping them. Today, it's the, the funnel has flipped. Today we focus mainly on keeping clients, and, and that's the major difference in terms of how marketing has changed as well. And I think that uh, if you, do you guys agree with this? Does this make sense, this, this, um, this slide? Do you agree that, raise your hand if you think today you spend more time on keeping clients versus finding new clients. Let's see what we get here. All right, we've got about half of you. I also understand that not all of you are present with me on this presentation. Webinars suck in one sense. That it's so easy for you to go read your email and look at your text or be somewhere else and not be present with me right now. Um, and I can see who's present and who isn't. So hopefully you guys can turn around. We can continue to have a conversation here together. As you're creating new clients and having them in, you know, getting, get boarding new clients into your business, it really does take seven engagements or touches on average for a sale to occur. And some people buy right away, some people are thinkers and they have to analyze and figure it all out, they have to research, they have to try it, it takes time. Um, you know, and, but in the end, it, it does take quite a lot of energy to create a new sale. You know, uh, uh, even for sometimes, like I have a client who's an existing client and she wants a new website. She came to me, I didn't go to her. And she's like, yeah, I want a new mobile website. I said, sure. We got an incredible multi-mobile website platform. It's really cost effective. I gave her a, even a great discount, too. And she still says she has to think about it. And that's understandable. You know, people can't just, you know, right out of the gate. So just remember that, it, you know, this is an average here, but it takes around seven engagements to, to convert, to get a sale happening. Here, here are the five types of people uh, and how you can leverage to inspire engagement. So you have your raving fans, customers with high level loyalty, trust, and engagement. They're, they willingly refer others to you and your business. And just to, to give you a quick success story there, we recently built a website for a client. I'm not going to mention any names right now, but we built this website. He was so happy. We did constant contact, and we did our VC to integrations for, for him. He was happy with that. He sent us a referral. Now, I sold him a site for 1500 the referral that he gave me led to an $18,000 deal for six websites that uh, obviously is a really exciting experience for all of us, and uh, we're, we're very fortunate. But what an unbelievable uh, benefit to just making sure your clients are happy. Um, that's why we don't try to do the nickel and dime thing or charge clients every single time they talk to us, because 
that's not how you build successful relationships. So always remember that um, you never knew who you're going to get a referral from. So the next kind of uh, relationship you can have is your customers. And those are people buying from you already. These are people who have engaged as a customer at some point in the past, maybe, and they may be willing to try alternatives if encountered. And then you have prospects, those that have a connection to you via person, product, or service, but may not know you yet. A connection exists for you either directly or indirectly through a raving fan, or a prospect is likely, uh, and, they, and they likely need your service. So the three first groups are obviously the ones to, to primarily focus on. Suspects are the folks inclined to do business with you someday, but no connection exists. There's really no direct or indirect connection, and um, it's possible that they'll work with you. So the, uh, the whole thing drives back to that, that raving fan, that wow experience. They'll help to convert customers into raving fans, and customers can help prospects, so on and so forth. And this, this cycle, this model works really well to, uh, as you understand it, to help in moving you know, people along the process. You'll, you'll notice I didn't even mention disinterested because there's nothing to say about that. If they've said no, that's fine. Just understand that they're not interested at this time and they may never be and it's not a good fit. So you just simply don't waste your energy. So we have engagement marketing and when we continue to focus on this, it drives the point back to, you know, the whole thing around that 78% of, of consumers' trust and recommendations. Well, when you look at the wow experience and the wow factor, I mean, like how many of you, when you look at it, when you do your reporting, how many of you are actually obtaining n new business from existing customers inside of your month? Like how many of you look to your existing client base to generate new revenue in, in, the, in the current or following month? Raise your hand if you're, if you, or are all of you focused on creating new? I mean, to me, this stat is really important and, and, and has tremendous value. It says here, you know, basically that 90% of your business comes from current and returning customers, while 10% is new. Okay, this is really powerful to be aware of because it all drives that point around engagement marketing. And, um, you know, again, like what I mean by that is you can have, if you have one client that you gave a wow experience to, it doesn't mean you have to sell them something the next month. It just means that they're going to end up selling something for you, which means that you ended up getting that new business from an existing client. That's what that means. So again, just really valuable uh, knowledge and awareness. So moving forward, no pun intended, our best friends now are the forward and share buttons on all of our websites and email templates and everywhere you can see. And don't forget to enable that feature inside of your email marketing. How many of you are not constant contact customers right now? Raise your hand if you are not a constant contact customer. Pretty much, okay, so we've got one, one person here, two. Okay, well, inside of constant contact, there's a feature. It's a, a way in which that you can make an email go viral. And it's a simple little share bar on the very top that allows for anyone receiving the message to not only forward this, but they can share it to anyone, uh, oh, sorry, to any social channel that they are connected to. And then we do reporting on that so we can tell you whether or not your, your email went viral. And it's powerful, very, very powerful, because if somebody receives it, they can like it on Facebook, and now the actual email becomes a property on Facebook that everyone on their timeline can see and then it's free advertising for you. So that's how you can get an organic viral engagement happening moving forward. So do we have any questions so far on engagement marketing at, right now? Because I'm done that first section. We're going to move on to channels, campaigns, and conversions next. <clears throat> All right. OK, so really uh, moving forward, this is a good section for understanding the mechanisms of marketing and how, how we accomplish achieving certain results. So, you know, how many of you today, just raise your hand, I'll ask you just two questions, two, three questions. How many of you today are using Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter? Raise your hand. Okay, keep your hands up 
And let me know if you're using Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. OK, this is great. A lot of you are, are really um, you know, engaged here. What about email? How many of you have checked your email today? If you don't raise your hand, it just tells me that you're not listening to me right now, because I know every one of you has checked your email today. Email has been around for 30 years. It's going nowhere. And in fact, a lot of the social channels integrate directly with email so that it gives you notification as to what's going on. OK, you can, you can I'll just, I just put your hands down for you. What you want to do, obviously, is be where your customers are. Just because you're on Facebook doesn't mean they're on Facebook. So you need to know what network and where and who and what and how. And you can, you can figure this out in a variety of different ways. But really, I think the best is just do a survey to your existing client base. Because a lot of the times, people are using um, email marketing. It's been a consistent way of generating new business. Hopefully, you all agree. And so you just you can you can turn on the survey product in constant contact and then run that survey or run a poll and ask them you know where would you like us to be hanging out mostly and you can also make sure you include Instagram in there now because it's becoming a really popular channel and now that they got the advertising turning on for that it gives us an opportunity to better uh, present ourselves in front of them so it's really important to to stay focused where your clients are because again we just we don't have all day to be doing marketing, and you know there needs to be that cutoff point from marketing to sales, and then to service. So you have to make sure that you're balanced. If you put too much time and you're sitting on Facebook all day, and you know you're getting engagement but you're not getting opportunity or leads, then it's it's not it's like you're hurting yourself. So you know just just realize that um, pick I would just pick two or three channels at most. You know, if it's email and Twitter and LinkedIn, for example, then that's it. You know, that's where you just need to focus and grow those channels out. Don't worry about the other ones. You'll you'll get to that when the time is right and or when demand emerges that you need to be there. But obviously, listen. Listen to where your customers are. I'll just give you a quick um, overview of Facebook. 1.2 plus billion are on this platform. Again, 1.2 billion people are on Facebook. That, that's massive, massive. And in fact, Facebook's like undertaking a, a huge project to bring the internet to the, the rest of the world that doesn't have it. I guess because that's their kind of campaign to get more users, because <laughs> pretty much the, the whole world is on it, um, who, who qualifies to be on it. 500 million daily users are on Facebook. And the average is 20 minutes, uh, 3.2 billion pieces of information a day. This is just a staggering reality that we're faced with today um, with regards to how, how relevant the online world truly is for us. It's, it's an integrated. I remember back in the early 90s when I was in high school, I brought the internet to high school on a dial-up connection as part of my, inter, uh, my uh, it's funny, but it was called an ISP back then, um, my independent study. And I, I just said, look, I, I'm just, I told my teacher, I just want to bring the internet to school. I was on CompuServe at the time. And I bring it in, and I just, people, actually, some of my friends thought I was a nerd or a geek. And I, I said, you guys have no idea what you just said. And here we are, you know, 20 years later, and uh, look at this. I mean, it's funny. I had friends back then that said to me, I never want to use email. I don't even know what it is, and I don't care for it. And, and now they're like working for IBM and places like that. So it's just an incredible reality in terms of how, it, it, yeah, I guess I'm the geek now. Um, <laughs> but I'm happy with that. I'm a marketing geek. So anyways, Facebook's really uh, powerful. Here's another ridiculous stat that I, when I first saw it, I, I freaked out. Um, so there's 4.8 billion people on mobile devices today. And 4.2 billion of us have a toothbrush. I mean, that's just an, another unbelievable uh, stat. And for those of you who think that mobile is not relevant to your business, think again. Your audience, I don't care if they're 60 years old, they have mobile phones, OK? Here's the proof, 4.8 billion of us. That means pretty much every human. I have two, one for personal 
which is my iPhone 5S, and I recently just did this. I wanted to separate business and, work, um, and personal more, and I think it was a smart move. And I got Android, uh, the LG G3 phone, for work, and that way, um, you know, when work's done, I could just like leave the phone down, you know, in the office, and and it, it actually works out really well. But anyways, look at this: 4.8 billion versus 4.2. People have a toothbrush. Really, what I want to get at is 53% of, of of all these users are actually reading email on their phone. 53% of us are reading email on their phone. This is an enormous reality related to today's marketplace. Okay, so what I want you to do is focus on that one stat as you continue your next marketing campaign. If you have a newsletter and you want me to review the newsletter, guys, um, I'm more than happy to do that for you. Uh, in fact, what you can do is you can send me a preview. Uh, send, it, send to um, cc at cc94.com. Send me a preview of a newsletter. I want to have a look at it. And I'll tell you how effective it's going to be, and I'll give you 10 ideas on how to make it better. But basically, less is more today. We really need to 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 understand this, and also back to the point where you know we have to, we have we have to touch a client or engage them seven times before they transact. Well, don't send them seven separate messages of separate call, different calls to action on seven separate promotions, because that's near impossible to close a deal. You're better off to stage the campaign and and hit them seven times within a two week period or something like that in different ways and different marketing channels to get to the end result. Uh, you know, and integrate your campaign that way. <clears throat> That's how we won that award, Integrated Marketing Campaign Award with Constant Contact. Less is more. You'll be given continued opportunity to engage as you move forward. Um, to, but just remember that 53% of, and this is just February, just that stat fresh out of the gate. And it's, it's, not, this, it's not a stat that tells you that 53% of people are actually on websites and viewing websites. It's that they're reading their emails. And that's something that we all need to, to pay very close attention to. So really what I want you to do is focus on the channels that matter the most. And again, here's another view of a zillion different ways of how you can get out there. And I'll let you look at this, this slide for a bit, absorb it. There might be some new stuff out there that you haven't seen before while I look at this question that Joshua just sent me. Do I have to send you a preview of my newsletter now or can I send it out? You can send it anytime you guys want. You can send me the preview whenever you'd like. Um, and I'll have a look at it and see what you guys are doing. I really would like for you to, to designate me and elect me as your, as your president, no, as your actual solution provider, guys. Um, we have a free $2,000 a year program that we give away to each and every one of you, and uh, it's really engaging. It gives you an opportunity to grow your business. You get to uh, leverage my award-winning knowledge, and I give you one-on-one -on -one time together as well. We do these monthly optimizations for you. There's more to the program than just that. We unlock all the webinars for you and a bunch of other cool things, give you discounts on services. It's like our, it's our loyalty program. And it's actually free and Constant Contact loves when we do this. It's our, through our partnership. They subsidize the partnership and that's why it's free. And uh, yeah, so I mean basically you just send an email off to me uh, if you want to join it. it it's just that simple. You just send an email to cc at cc94 and just put in there, yes, I want you as my solution provider, and add your username. Um, and that's that. Super simple, guys. So looking at some of the social channels in a little bit more detail, we have Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Google+. For those of you who are not on Google+, get on Google+ just to set up your profile and make sure it's connected with Google. But you don't have to like be actively engaging on the channel unless you really want to and your clients are there. But definitely get on there because it makes you look better with Google. Um, but you can see here that, that this is another chart that outlines you know, what to expect on each channel and it gives you descri descriptions around the attributes of what makes it unique. Obviously, uh, Instagram is all photo-based. It's young, young adults. Pinterest is... Uh, also a photo driven, uh, we're just such a visual world now. So these, those two are really popular, we're gaining more ground. Twitter, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is exclusively for business. If you guys wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, just search for Brandon Clayman um, and I will uh, be more than happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. I have over a thousand connections on that channel, it's pretty good. But yeah, definitely have a look at this. Um, 
you know, we've, we've talked quite a bit on social today. Uh, it's good for you to be aware. So well, what are campaigns? You know, let's, let's review some of what campaigns look like. Again, the mechanisms of marketing are very simple. You push content, you pull a response. And that's basically the nut, the nut bowl or nut, nutshell of, of, you know, of campaigns. And in every context of whatever it is you're doing, you're going to need to do this. And the response that you pull from your campaign and the content you put out there is really needing to be measurable. And uh, that's how you get you know, success happening and traction and achieving of your goals. It's important to um, define what, what you want out of a campaign prior to pushing the content out so that you clarify and understand what it is you're going after. Types of campaigns that we can look at. There's newsletters and announcements, special offers and deals. You have online surveys and polls. Okay, there's event invites and updates. Those are some general ones, and all of those are found in our new toolkit essential plan. At 45 bucks a month with constant contact, you can have all of that and more. Um, the different types of newsletter newsletters and announcements to go even deeper since we do a lot of that, you can see there's like you can send a know-how article to your audience and let them know that, you know, share your knowledge with them. There's business letters, there's press releases. We just took on a new client and that's all they do. They send like 10 press releases out every single day on behalf of their clients. And it's uh, something that just keeps them really, really busy. And you can send newsletters, traditional newsletters, and cards or announcements and custom code. Looking at newsletters and announcements in a little bit more detail, remember, like this is in the scope and, and context of a campaign. You want to make sure that you know you're sending, you're sending the, you've got the social share bar turned on, that you're syndicating your your emails through social media. Okay, these are just some basic tips that your logo is at the top left with your name in there and text. I'll give you. Again, if, if you want to enroll in that managed account program, it's, it's free, but I'll give you like 10 optimizations every month. In fact, for if you want, we'll just give you a brand new template. I'll build and design a brand new template for you uh, for free. If, uh, if that's something that you are interested in, we, we absolutely be happy to do that for you um, upon request. So again, um, you want to look at, I've see, I still see this happening today. Some of you guys are rushing it and you're just throwing all of your content into the newsletter and full articles and people are getting this content. They're like, I can't read this. It's just too much information for me to take in. And so they, you know, you end up getting it unsubscribed. And when you look at this, this best practice here, it actually can make or break an email campaign um, just that one point. So you want to make sure that you're only including a little bit of the article, the most compelling component of the article, and then trigger the, the call to action for them to read the entire article on your website because that's what you want to do. You want to take them from the newsletter, bring them to your landing pages, your websites, your opt-in forms, all that good stuff to carry on the conversation. When you look at special offers uh, and deals, again, it's, these are really critical that you push those to your social channels. And even if you're not using all your channels, um, you know, you can still connect, like, for example, Twitter and Facebook together if you wanted to, so that you're, if you're updating one, the other one gets updated. And, uh, but you can focus on one channel primarily, if it's Twitter. And again, you put them out there, you can email them, uh, focus on collecting money on the spot if you're going to do these types of offers. Again, our system completely handles that through the toolkit platform and make sure you're tracking everything because in the end we really want to make sure that you're winning and that's how you track you find out the results surveys and polls pretty straightforward and then we have event invites and updates another component to campaign so any questions on campaigns okay so let's get to the next section cuz we're coming up almost to the end of our time here, and I've got still a bunch of slides left. Um, meaningful marketing metrics that matter. So how many of you right now are not, you know, like how many of you don't have 
a mission or vision or values for your business. Just raise your hand if you do not have this type of organizational clarity. So pretty much every one of you has a mission, vision, and values, and that's great. And that's you know obviously a strategic component to your, your business. And as you def define the vision of your business, I've done a lot of business consulting in my time, and, as, and specifically in vision consulting. And you know, the vision is what carries the values. It, it contains the goals of your business. And goals are long-term. Goals are those larger milestones in your organization that need to be uh, defined clearly and integrated with your vision. And so um, for today, really what I want you to look at is objectives. And objectives are a smaller component of a goal. So they are like broken down to monthly objectives and monthly achievements that if, you know, over this quarter, if you get 10 new customers each month, you'll reach your overall goal of achieving 30 new customers by the, the end of the quarter. And, and that's going to help us way more than to continue to focus on the big picture, especially when we're small businesses. So these are just some examples of some, some objectives. And this, this is important for you guys to put into context into your business as well through, throughout your marketing plan because that's why we're doing all of this. It's not so that you sit and you're like reporting all day. It's just so that you have organizational clarity and awareness to know where you're growing and going. Looking at specifics, when we look at, for example, conversion, this is a, a slide that shows you specific information around an advertising campaign that took place on, on AdWords, Google AdWords, and it shows you the number of conversions and the cost per conversion and the conversion rate. So how many of you are aware of these types of terminologies or understand what I've just said? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about right now or if this is totally new to you. Um, it's important that you become aware because what I'm sharing with you right now is information that's relevant to you successfully achieving your objective throughout a campaign. And it shows you really the cost of acquisition. So the bottom one, for example, he, this, this slide here, there are three conversions. It was $11.72 a conversion. Okay. 27% is the conversion rate, and that's much more realistic. Um, these are still high numbers. This is more like a sample. But what's important to, to share with you is that when you're in business, ultimately when we get more scientific around marketing, we need to know what is the cost of acquisition. What's it going to cost me to create a new client today? And in this case, it literally spells it out for you. Very smart easy to understand, and you can track the performance instantly. So these are that gives you a full awareness, really, um, in that one channel to know what's going on. Further, Google Analytics. There are ways in Google Analytics to use this product so that you can set up goals. And you can see here, these are specific goals that have been created for this website that allow for specific information to um, be tracked so they can see the, the, how many inquiries uh, and what type of inquiry and their SEO, that they, how much SEO they received. Google Analytics is a very comprehensive package. It's free. And you can actually define goals in there. Without even having AdWords set up, you can use analytics in a way that you can do a very similar way of tracking things. And I think it's important to just, at the very basics, define some objectives each month, like how many website visitors should be coming to our website, how many, what percentage of growth would we like to have for our newsletter sign up, or how many people would, do we want signing up to the newsletter, how many leads are coming through, how many sales, and, and, that's, and then how much revenue. And th those are some basic metrics. You can look at social, you can look at your following, and see how that grows. But you guys should all be defining these objectives that I can help you with on an account review call. That's absolutely free, guys. More than happy to, to spend my time to help you define these goals and objectives and even help you guys get set up with Google Analytics. This is an integrated campaign report within Toolkit. So it shows you that there's been 25 campaigns. It tells you 
how many engagements, revenue, total contacts. It's a really good snapshot of what's really going on here overall within the story. Here is um, a case study I'll share with you really quick from one of my clients who's based in Atlanta. He's uh, the carguyatl.com. We built him a website. These are astounding numbers I want to share with you. He received out of the launch of his website, which was only just a few months in, he received over 380 credit app forms filled out off his website, 131 phone calls, 16 people clicked on the Find Us map, and five direct emails. Can you see how easy my software, I show you here how easy it is to track results? And you're not sifting and digging and trying to see. And it also tells you the breakup of the, the orange is mobile. So you clearly, the reason why he's getting such an incredible array of response is because he's utilizing our mobile platform. And that allows for the level of success that he's achieved. When you look at the number of credit apps, if he closed 30% of that, he's made well over $20,000. Okay, he only spent a couple grand with us. So his ROI is just incredible. But um, I love the fact that he's received also that many phone calls as well. So really, really cool stuff and uh, just awesome. Just remember, like what I want you guys to realize is I'm not trying to show off with, with this. This is a really cool case study. He's used Instagram primarily to get the traffic to his website because Instagram is exclusively a mobile platform. He drove traffic from Instagram to his site. Didn't have to pay for that, but just, you know, he was creating wow experiences with clients. He was posting Instagram photos of happy customers, and more and more customers saw that and wanted those cars, and they ended up going to a site. It was actually really simple. It wasn't a complex marketing strategy involved or anything like that. It didn't take him months and months and months to launch. In fact, in his first month, he had very similar numbers. It was just divide that by two. So again, conversion that counts, conversion that matters. That's all I really care about for you guys. It's not about impressing people upon click-throughs and open rates. It's really about the results that you get from the campaigns that you create. Remember, track what matters to your business. That's what makes it meaningful and sustainable. So I'll give you guys a few examples now. I'll just whiz through these over the next little, a few more minutes here. And I'll show you some examples of what we've done for some clients um, on how you can diversify your portfolio of engagement. If anybody has any questions throughout, just go ahead and ask. Now's a good time. Um, so here's a newsletter we did for a local real estate agent. You can see good branding in place, sharp, clean, crisp, clear, good photos. We've got feature, good, good combination of images and text. Here's a gym that uh, just recently rebranded, and you can see all their different programs of engagement. They just simply can click there and go to the specific program they want to get into. These are newsletters and announcements. Here's uh, event registrations. This is another landing page for an event registration. In fact, this is what I delivered last week. Or yeah, I think it was last week. Then we have offers and promotions. So you can run social campaigns and local deals and coupons. You can see the cool stats that you get from that. I love the social campaign product. It's really cool inside of Constant Contact. You guys should give it a try. And it does a good job of tracking the results. And you can run Facebook ads to turbo boost the overall level of performance of that campaign. And then you've got feedback and surveys. You can never get enough feedback from clients. I think it's really important to listen and continue to listen and to do your best to meet their needs without breaking your back. This is one of our multi-website solutions. This is a client who um, you can see all the three versions that you get with us. These are mobile websites. There's the real estate agent again with uh, Shiloh Story. And we've got a couple of other clients here. You can text people from our mobile platform, schedule meetings. It integrates with Constant Contact, Twitter, all that good stuff. And for those of you who've, who've never heard of VCTA, this is an online scheduling platform that allows people to quickly book you and pay for your service, and if it's free, great. Um, if you guys want to try it out, you can go to uh, claimant.net. <clears throat> you can see how it's what it's like, and you, you can actually just book a call with me if you're interested. And that's the actual VCTA platform, and uh, we offer that to our clients as well. 
these are just different examples of different types of customers. These are this is like the home page, and it's like a micro landing site that you can utilize. Um, so that's basically it for the content today, and I'm going to present to you a special offer. So I haven't received many questions. There's still a few few bunch of you actually on the call. So here's the offer, guys. It's it's a two tiered offer. If you are already in constant, okay, it's three, because many of you are already in constant contact, and I'll just spell these out in the chat window. So the first thing is, number one, enroll in MAP, our managed account program. Um, it's a simple program. You don't need the, you know, big business decisions here. You can withdraw at any time. Just email me, um, and you can get in. I'll give you a free template, and you'll get your first account review call right out of the gate. We'll do that this month. You'll be very happy with the results, and I promise you that I will guarantee you a measurable response just from one phone call with me. I've had people improve their, their click-throughs by 1,400%. That's not a lie. It happens regularly because of the specialized focus I have as being the number one partner in the world with Constant Contact. Send me the username and a preview of your last campaign. Okay. So for those of you who don't want to spend a dime today, uh, you don't have to. Good for you. You can just simply enroll in our managed account program. If you're if you're already in our program and you're an existing client, then book a call with me. Um, that's free. You can go to claimant.net and we'll do an account review for you if we haven't talked to you. If you are wanting to try Vcita, um, this is a the, the online scheduling platform. If any of you guys are doing uh, anything to do with um, online scheduling or you have uh, specifically People want to engage you. If you have WordPress, we have a powerful plugin for WordPress. If you go to my website, you'll see what it looks like. But basically, what we'll do is we'll give you the free setup. It's a $500 value. We're just going to waive that. Um, and your your cost is 300 bucks. You pay for the, the, the ultimate package for one user for, per year. And it integrates live with your schedule, your calendar. And it becomes this really engaging tool on your website. Okay. And then the last offer is this. If you're new to Constant Contact, okay, if you buy today, again, we're going to do what's called a completely free setup. And this isn't just a simple little template. You're going to get phone calls from us. We're going to actually treat you as if you're any other type of normal client. We will do a complete and total setup of your account, and we will run your first campaign for you. And that's it. I, that's a huge and generous offer on all fronts. So if anybody wants to engage me, guys, I've given you tons of opportunity to do that right now and to work with me. I'm a really good guy, you know, very direct and clear. Sometimes I come across as ego or, or cocky, but it's not. I'm just really passionate and I'm really confident because I've been able to provide my clients with a sustainable array of success throughout these last 20 years of being in business. And I'm just here to serve. I've worked with millionaires. I work with best-selling authors on New York Times best-selling authors list, several of them, in fact. Um, and I've worked with all kinds of startups and just clients from around the world in different departments and specialized areas. It, the list goes on and on. So I'm really just here to, to be a provider for you. If you guys want to move forward with me, um, the offer stands. Send me an email, get in touch, contact, reach out, do whatever you want to do, and uh, I will be more than happy to help you. So. I'm going to stop the recording.